RPGs are popular for a reason. They are addictive to play and they have a simple, lovable game design and structure. What we're going to dive into today is the battle system of RPGs, one of the particularly enjoyable aspects of an RPG, that classic turn-based battle system. I'm going to demo some of it right now. I want to point out a few things. All the game assets I use, all the code, everything is open source, public domain, CC0. It's linked in the description. Use it for this stuff. Use it for something else. Make something awesome with it. What we'll be doing is we're going to grab a hero and a villain. I choose the wizard and giant, but you'll have your options. And then we're going to be setting up a, well, a turn-based system. There'll be a melee attack, a uh, range attack. There'll be an option to run if you want to build this out further into a large RPG game, scaling it up. There will be health bars and mana bars or magic bar, whatever you prefer. Sometimes that's contentious. Regardless, it's going to be really fun to see this come together. You could, again, you could add this to a larger game. You could build upon this to make a whole world for for our universe that we're creating, or you could use this as a game in and of itself, a battle fighting game of awesomeness. So I think you're gonna have a lot of fun making this. Let's go ahead and get going. Here we are in Unity. And to start off, we definitely do want a 2D game, right? For a template, we're gonna select 2D game. And now for a project name. Name this, I shall call this Fight fight game. I am deeply, deeply creative. Um, I'm going to put the word video at the end. So I remember 2D game is named create. And voila, here we are. So what we can do first is start setting up the basic aspects of the game. I know I am going to want sprites. So I'm going to click down here and do create folder sprites. And we'll need those for setting up the game as a whole. Now, the sprites I'll be using are Creative Commons Zero, which means essentially public domain. They are free for you to use however you want in a game you make, sell, or just do for fun. I've already downloaded them. Let me magic them over here. It's called Superpower Asset Pack. You can find them if you just Google Superpowers Assets Pack. It's pretty large, too. It's a really great pack of assets. So I'm just going to drag this in here and drop. You can find them on a GitHub, and they have their own page. It might take a minute because of how many assets we have within this. All right, so that is a very large asset package. We are mostly going to be using this RPG battle set. I will be using stuff from the other parts of it. However, if you want to save yourself some time, you could just put, uh, you could solely use this part of it. I'm going to go ahead and actually drag this folder in particular into the sprites folder itself. And now let's make sure our scene, we're going to here, we want to go into game and do kind of like an old school, uh, Game Boy game, I guess, for three, it should be great. And then let's go back over here to scene. And let's go ahead and add a background. Now, if I click down here and go into our folder and search for background, it's going to come up with quite a few. You want to be careful with these. Some of these are from, well, like I said, the other asset pack. And these asset packs, not all are going to fit the screen quite as well. So I'm going directly into our RPG battle and headed to background and going to pick one out of here. Background, it's not going to change the game much, so if you have that one that you particularly like, go for it. I uh, am going to add this in a bit of a different way. Let me pick one out for myself first. Maybe this guy. Sure. Now, instead of just dropping it in like this, right, having the raw image, let's make a canvas for it. That way it's easier to have the camera focus, uh, to have the camera focused in on it and have it as the, have it stabilized as the background. So, UI canvas. Okay. And with our canvas, again, we're going to go ahead and switch this to screen space camera. Which camera? Well, we only have one, that camera. And then instead of a constant pixel, we're going to do scale with screen size. And the screen size for this is going to be 1280 by 960. It should be great. And that is looking good for the canvas aspect of it. So I'm going to rename this to, yeah, over here, I guess, background canvas, because I am creative with naming. Now, to this background canvas, I'm going to right click and do a create image. And this is where we'll actually put the background that we want. I was going to use this, drop that there, and then set native size. It's getting better, but we are going to want to increase it. Since we did set the size of this canvas ourselves, we know the size we would like. 
So I'm going to click right here. And I just want a little bit bigger than the edges of the canvas. So I know it covers the entire space like this. With that set, that should be good to go. And so the plan of attack here is to obviously we're going to get some of these visuals set up first, and then we can start animating and coding and creating the movement part of our game. All right, so we need another canvas to do that. So I'm going to go ahead, game object UI canvas. This is great. I'm going to call, uh, before I forget, let's say background image. Good to have properly named items here. And I'm going to just hide that. And then let's say this is going to be our heads up display, our HUD, if you will. I'm going to say heads up canvas. Okay. And that way, well, we know what our, what it is. With that in place, let's start adding the panels we need to create our display. I, I'm going to use the scroll wheel to zoom in here. With this selected, we're going to game object, UI, and panel. Boom. And it's like this because we still need to actually adjust our canvas. We again want screen, screen space camera. I'm going to select our camera here. Boom. Boop. And then constant, no, we want to scale with screen size. And it will be that same. And there we are. Now, and now with this panel, let's go ahead and give it a color. This is going to be the menu area for the entire game. So I was thinking of like an orangey-ish color, maybe something like this, maybe a bit darker. And that's something like this. Totally up to you how you want your game to look, of course. So let's boop. And then I'm just going to kind of smush this down. It's going to contain the characters who are fighting, their health, their mana, some buttons. And so we do need space for all of that. So for, that's fine. And then from the top, let's test out a few numbers here. 700 maybe, and like in more of a 650. All right, 675, I guess. Okay, great. And so I'm going to stick right there with this panel, and I'll just call this main panel. And good. Now let's also, we're going to need to figure out our characters. So in sprites, in our PG battling system, let's head over to, well, characters. And it's up to you who you use. I'm going to walk through a melee attack, a range attack, and a ability to run. So you're going to want to look for or create a figure out, creatively uh, figure out your own way to make those two moves happen. And my choice was the wizard, actually. I was really liking the wizard. And so that's who I'll go with. And let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and select this guy. Notice we can't pop it out yet. And that's because we have all of these images. But we need to separate them all out. And to do that, I'm going to go from single to multi over here, and I'm going to go into the sprite editor. Oh yeah, we want to apply this. Oh, there it is. In the sprite editor, we're going to slice. Not automatic. The easiest way I find for many, many, many sprite sheets is grid by cell count. So how many columns? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go ahead and do that. How many rows? Looks like six again. And slice. Let's see if we need to do any changes now. I'm going to click on these squares. They are looking good. Okay, well, this one was easy. Let's go ahead and then apply these. And we should be all set there. X. And now we have a whole bunch of different animations of a character. Well, different images. Let's add our character to the screen here. You can just drag and drop. And I'm going to call this guy wizard. Okay. Or I can even do wizard hero, so we know whose side we are on. And then I want larger size for a character, so I'm gonna maybe not two, maybe 1.75, 1.75, something like this. Yeah, I'm liking that. At 4.4, sure, and Y, negative 0.5. Yes. All right. Now, with that all set, let's go ahead and find a bad guy. I'm gonna go ahead, though, also, since I know who my character is, I want to drag this out into sprites. So it's easier for me to access, and I'm going to want to be able to use this as well. All right. And now for the enemies, I'm about to pick a monster. Of course, after you don't have to pick who I pick. I was really liking, is there, yeah, the giant. Here we are. Here's our giant. So, and it looks like we got two options here as well. Let's see what this is like. I'm going to go to multiple and then spray editor again. Yes, apply. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to be using this giant. 
So same deal here. I'm going to go slice. It looks like we have eight. Yes. Eight columns, four rows, and slice. That is great. That's looking good as well. So I'm going to hit apply. And we're good. I'm going to X. Same thing I did with our hero. I'm going to go ahead and grab this sprite sheet now and drop it over here. All right. And now with our enemy here, who is awesome, I'm going to go ahead and drag this guy up right about there. And giant enemy. Great. Same deal here. Maybe I'll do negative 4.4. Maybe a bit big for that. So 0.3 and then 0.4 maybe. That is all looking great. I really like this enemy. All right, that's looking good. Let's focus on our menu down here or making it one. Let's use, we're going to add a panel for buttons. And like I said, you could use these stuff entirely within the RPG system. I really like a little background for these buttons that are in the superhero assets pack, which is entirely free. They are down here in the prehistoric clap in their HUD. Okay. And this is what I'll be using. So I'm going to go ahead and then add on the canvas, heads up canvas, I'm going to create something called, I'm going to create an empty called action menu or act menu or anything like that. Great. And in this action menu, well, we need menu items. So I'm going to create, and we're looking for image. Now what this image will be is one of these panels. So we can go ahead and drag this over here and drop it in. We also are going to want to move this down because our buttons are going to be located down here. And you'll notice mine's a bit close to actually the background I have here on my panel. So I'm going to go to my main panel and I have found a color. I'm just going to paste it in here. C87F4C. And that's a bit better. So this is one part of my panel. Now we're going to have buttons laid out on this. So I need two more of these exactly. So I'm going to just call this panel center maybe. And we do know it's a child of the action menu. So I'm going to duplicate this once and then duplicate it again. And then I'm just going to zoop it, move it over. Okay. And we can kind of check the game menu, the game to see if we're liking how it is lining up. I'm going to use the scroll wheel to scroll and then click down on the right mouse button to move the screen around. So if you want to get super exact, you certainly can, but we don't need to be perfectly precise. All right. And let's do the same here and zoom in some. And kind of just get it as good as we can. Let's check the game menu to make sure. Yep, it blends really well together. Now, we're also going to need these side pieces. So to add those, I'm going to, again, just honestly duplicate this. Oops, except I deleted. Undo. I'm going to do duplicate. And with that duplicated, let's get back to the scene. Let's zoom out. Whoop. Right, I can move it over some so I can see it. And I'm just going to drop this guy. And then we would, well, want to change the width a little bit to 50, maybe 40. I'm liking 40 for that. Perfect. And then for this, I am now just going to duplicate this one more time. And instead of, well, now nah, let's go ahead and use this piece. It is a little bit different of an animation. Let's take a look at the game menu. Yep, great. That is awesome. Let me get these labeled real quick. There we are. And with this setup, it's now time for the buttons. I'm just going to double click on a heads up display to kind of view out, uh, zoom out and view the whole thing again. Now let's head over to sprites. Let's shrink down sprites because it looks terrifying sprites. And then super uh, RPG is what I'm going for here. And heads up display. Here are our buttons. We're going to need to chop them up. So multiple sprite editor. Yes, apply. And now, just like we did before, we are going to want to chop up this with the slice grid by cell count. And then it should be, yes, it's going to be 10 columns by four rows and slice. Let's click. And that's looking perfect. The buttons are, uh, to give it a more three-dimensional feel, they are a bit fatter on the edges on this these sides, but that is intentional. So those are looking great. I'm going to go ahead and apply this now. Awesome. Now, the buttons that we'll be adding are going to be, let me go ahead and drag this to the normal sprites folder, are going to be for attack. And then we need an attack, a melee attack, a range, or a magic attack, however you would word that, and then a run. Run is the most straightforward, so I'm just going to be using the shoe icon for that. I'm going to go ahead and click on Action Menu. We can actually do it on the heads-up display directly. UI and Image. And with this up here, let's go ahead and throw the shoe at it. 
Well, she you know, yeah, yeah. Um, shoe. Boom. There we are. And let's drag our new friend, the shoe, down. Obviously too large. I'm zooming in with the scroll wheel right now. So let's go ahead and put this at a more manageable width. Maybe a 70 by 70, perhaps. Yes. That looks a bit better. And so my exposition, sure, it will be 95. And for Y, it's going to be negative 370. Three? Five? Three? Three it is. All right. And this is run ATN, I will call this. And let me go ahead and pull it into our action menu. There we are. Whoops. There we go. Down below. And then I'm going to duplicate the run button. Duplicate. And move this. What I'll do actually is Y will stay the same for X. I'm just going to put a negative in front of it. And that even-ish. Thankfully, we are in control. So let me grab this left side panel. Nope left side cap and push that is looking better i'll move it just a pair more this way all right and then so this will be our melee attack so let's go ahead and click and what should we use you might want to use the fist i think i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the sword for this one so i'm gonna drag that out and drop there we are and then we need one more oh let me rename this so i know nearly etn great and then i'm gonna need to duplicate and this one will be, I'm going to call range BTN. You could do magic. It is up to you. For my range BTN, though, I will be using, well, the bow and an arrow. Here we are. Let's just pull this one dead center. So dead center, X to be zero. And that should line up nicely. Our three buttons. Perfect. Okay. Now, up next in this, and now with it all together, I'm thinking we might want it a bit larger, which is fine because if we, oops, I don't want to move these. I'm going to hold down shift and click here, highlighting all of them. I'm going to go to our scale tool and zoop. yeah, let's test out a 1.2 and oh, 1.2. Dang. That's looking a bit better. Might even go to 1.3, 1.3, not 1.6. Okay. Yes, that's perfect. Great. All right. So now we have our menu ready to rock. And with the basics of our HUD in place, with our buttons ready to go, in the next episode, we will dive into producing, to getting, to making character movement and a bit of interaction in our game.